Thank you, Doreen. Lovely as always. Merry Christmas to you all. We're so glad to have you with us. This is St. Stephen's in Sierra Vista. Those of you joining us online, I'm the Reverend Allison Cornell. We're glad to have you with us. Um, and uh, just a few notes about our service this evening. Um, you should have, as one of your inserts, a song sheet, because our opening song is actually a medley of all of these Christmas carols. We're singing first verses only, and uh, we didn't give you the music because we figured you know the tunes, and so we give you the lyrics for the first um, stanzas, the first verses for each of these. So that's what we're going to do as our opening song this evening. Um, when we get through with communion, and when we do communion this evening, the way we're going to do it is I'll stand in the middle and hand out the bread, and then there will be a chalice to the right and to the left. And so as you come forward, get the bread, and then if you're on this side of the church, go this way. If you're on this side of the church, go that way. Um, we do use real wine. If that's not something that you're comfortable with or you just don't like it, uh, you can just take the bread and go uh, past the chalice. You don't have to stop at the chalice. Um, the bread is gluten-free, so so if anyone has a gluten-free allergy kind of thing, don't worry about it. It is a gluten-free bread. Um, and then once we've finished with communion, when you get back to your seats, we're going to bring the lights in the house down, and you each should have a candle that's an electric one that you can screw the top in, and it will light up. And by candlelight, we're going to sing Silent Night. And then we'll conclude our service, uh, and we'll head out. Um, I think that's all for the, the, the particulars I need to mention for this evening. Um, you also should have an announcement sheet. I hope you'll take that with you. It uh, has some of the upcoming things that are on our calendar for things to do uh, with the church. Um, for those of you tomorrow that would like to come back and join us again, it'll be a, a different sermon tomorrow morning for Christmas Day. And we're going to have a light brunch afterwards. We've got some quiche and some fruit, some croissants. We'll have coffee, of course. And if you want to come in your pajamas, that's okay. So uh, that'll be for tomorrow. Um, so if you will, please stand and join in singing our Christmas medley, starting off with God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. Thank you. 
those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. There was in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And to the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now even into Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary, and Joseph, and the babe, lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all that they heard, they wondered at all those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. A kind of a funny thing happened earlier while we were getting ready for this service. Um, we had um, a kind of a messenger, a, a, a divine de delivery person, a, an angel, who stopped by and um, gave me these two presents and told me that I was to open them with all of you this evening. And uh, so I was like, well, okay. Um, I didn't get much by other um, instructions, so um, I'm going to go ahead and, and open these since we're all here together now. Um, and it, the, the packages uh, are addressed to the good people gathered at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Sierra Vista on uh, December the 24th in 2022. And so I'm opening the first one up, and inside is life. And along with this life, there's a letter that uh, goes with it. So I'm going to open that up and, and see what that has to say. Um, it's a little bit long, but bear with me. Uh, it says, Dearest people gathered together in St. Stephen's Church. I wanted to remind you of two very precious, precious gifts this evening. The first is the gift of life. Each and every one of you has been given this gift of life. I gave you life because I love you and want you to have the best possible experience here on earth. I want you to feel all the possible feelings. I want you to know happiness and sadness, clarity and confusion, peace and worry, mystery and wonder and love, most of all, love. Feeling all your feelings is a part of being alive and having life. I want you to smell all the possible smells, heady roses and earthy rain, playful puppy breath and putrid puppy poop. 
savory homemade cooking and woodsy smoke in fireplaces, and glorious gardens and gross garbage, sweet perfumes and musky body odors. Smell all of these smells because they are part of being alive and having life. I want you to see all that there is to see, glorious sunrises and sunsets, and gory acts of violence, powerful thunderstorms and terrible twisters, a baby's first breath, and a loved one's last breath, the immense spread of stars in the sky, and the simple starfish of the seas, the sincere smiles of strangers, and the snarky sneers of fellow human beings, Mother Nature showing off colors in leaves and feathers and fur and fish scales, and the human destruction of so many habitats. See all these things because they are a part of being alive and having life. I want you to hear all there is to hear. Bird song and bumblebee buzzes, wind blowing through pine trees and the whines of engines on roads and in the airways, baby laughter and bigots bragging, tender teachings and angry outbursts, moving music of symphonies, jazz quartets, and a cappella singing and scary gunshots. Hear all these things because they are a part of being alive and having life. I want you to touch all kinds of things, rough rocks and smooth stones, tender caresses and loved-filled hugs, silky fabrics and soft kitten fur, bumpy bruises and skin covered in stitches, sand between your toes and freezing snow in your hands, the wavy ridges of wood grain and the satiny feel of warm river water. Touch all kinds of things because they are a part of being alive and having life. I want you to taste all things there are to taste. Bittersweet chocolate and bittersweet tears. Passionate kisses and passion fruit. Salty skin and salty oceans. Dry toasts and dry desert air. Fondue cheese and fresh fountain water. Grapes off the vine and the grapes of communion cup. Taste all there is to taste because they are a part of being alive and having life. This life I gave you is full of good things and it is also full of disappointments and not so good things. They go together. So that you can experience life in its fullest measure, I want you to celebrate and exult in the good things. Let your life be full of as much of those good things as you can find. For the disappointments and the not-so-good things, discover what they teach you. Learn from what they tell you about yourself, about your fellow human beings, and also maybe about me. Maybe those not-so-good things will draw you close to me, something I really hope for. One last thing about your gift of life. It doesn't end here on earth. There's even more life to come, someday, when the time is right. I promise there will be your day, your time, to come back to me for your eternal life. Until then, enjoy this gift of your life. Love, your Abba Ama in heaven. Now we've got a second gift here. And in the second gift, there's also a letter. And the second gift contains Jesus. So in this second gift, let me get this other letter out. It says, Dearest children of mine, here is your second gift, Jesus. Tonight is a night of remembrance of another night long ago the night that my son Jesus was born among you. It is a night to retell the story of how Jesus came to be born in Bethlehem, a miracle birth, announced and celebrated by angels, witnessed by shepherds and later by wise men. It is a night to try to relive those desperate moments of finding a place for Mary to give birth, 
a most humble place, a stable and a manger for the King of Kings and the Prince of Peace. Tonight, I want you to remember the gift of my son Jesus to you, how he came not in power as a warrior, not as a strong man, not as a traditional ruler of men. My son Jesus came to you as a baby, entered into your lives as a real person who grew up in a rural village, not in a palace, who skinned his knees, had brothers and sisters and cousins, had moments of impulsivity, didn't always do what he was told, and surprised people with his teachings and his ways. I gave you my son in such a way as to make him easier to know, to relate to, to see that he lived a life similar to your life. He had to learn to obey his parents. He had to learn to trade a trade to support himself for work. He had to figure out how to live according to life's rules and laws and customs. He had to explore his faith in the teachings of the synagogue and in quiet moments alone in prayer. He had to grow in his understanding of me as God, his heavenly father. I gifted you my son Jesus so that you would find me, God, maybe less frightening, not so distant, but right here in this messy life with you. I gifted you with Jesus to teach you through his wisdom and words and his life how to be the people that I hope and want you to be. I gifted you with Jesus to lead you to the best in this life, and I gifted you with Jesus to let you know how much I love you, to let you know that there is nothing that can change my love for you, to let you know that through my son Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, there is a promise of another life for each of you. May you have a Merry Christmas, celebrating the birth of my son Jesus, and may you receive the gift of Jesus into your hearts and lives more fully this year and every year. Love, your Abba, Amma in heaven. Well, I, uh, I don't think there's anything that I can say to top that. God's gift to us all, his, this precious life and his own son, Jesus. I think all there is left to say is, Amen. Please stand and say with me the Nicene Creed found on page 5. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God, the true God, the God not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Continue with the prayers of the people found on page 6. Let us pray to God who came among us in the birth of Jesus. Gracious God, as a star rose and drew people from great distances to Bethlehem, that they might greet the child like the Christ, the Christ child. Draw us your church with all people to you. 
that we might be the church and the people who call to us and call us to be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As you gave Mary your Holy Spirit, filling her with the delight of your presence, fill us with your Spirit and renew our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Gentiles stream to Jesus' light and keen to the brightness of his rising, draw our nation, our president, all authority to your brightness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as angels sing glorious to you and proclaim peace on earth and goodwill among all people, bring us your presence and bring to an end terror, terror, conflict, and strife. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. As shepherds were drawn away from their flocks by night, draw those who do not know you yet the knowledge and love of you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. As Jesus was born in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn, be especially present to those who have nowhere to lay their head, those who are vulnerable, and those who are hungry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As your holy family gathered in Bethlehem and traveled together to far off lands, bless all families, especially the families of our parish, and protect those who travel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As your Son came to proclaim the forgiveness of sins and to give the life eternal, give to the departed eternal rest and let light perpetual shine on them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Thank you, Lord, for this congregation, all that are gathered here, all that will gather tonight. Be with those who are not able to be with us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, may the light and the hope of this night and this Christmas season, and of your Son's incarnation, reassure our hearts that you are among us, that you hear our prayers, and that you will be with us always, even to the end of the age. In the name of Jesus, the wonderful Counselor, mighty God, and Prince of Peace, we pray. Amen. May the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Through Christ, let us continually offer to God the sacrifice of praise, that is, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Please stand as you are able. Jesus, your Son. 
For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
This time you should each have your own candles and you'll want to uh, screw the, the top back on so that the, they light up. And uh, Tim, can we get you to lower the lights in the church? And we'll be singing Silent Night, which is number 111 in the hymnal. So you want to get that out.
with the sweetness of inward peace and goodwill, that we may join the heavenly host in singing praises to your glory. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child. And may Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn this evening is number 79, O Little Town of Bethlehem. <laughs>
We are called to love and serve.